Let's go. Ride now, ball. Ride, ball. Ride, ball. Ride. Ride, ball. All right. Buckle up, folks. We're about to dive into the wildest, most hair-raising moments in bull riding history. These aren't your average rodeo mishaps. We're talking about the cream of the crop when it comes to oh no moments. So grab your popcorn, hold on to your hats, and let's count down the 20 worst wrecks in bull riding history. Number 20, Jake Charleston's Fantastic Adventure. Jake Charleston gives new meaning to the phrase riding the fence. Well, folks, gather round and let me tell you about our buddy Jake Charleston. This fella took the phrase go big or go home a bit too literally if you ask me. Picture this, it's just another day at the rodeo, crowds cheering, dust's flying, and Jake's got himself a date with destiny, or in this case, a rather ordinary bull. Now, most cowboys aim to stay on top of the bull. Or is it the other way around? Here we go, don't get But not our Jake. Oh no, he had to get creative. So there's Jake holding on tighter than a tick on a hound dog when suddenly, whoosh, that bull decides Jake needs a better view of the arena. And boy, did he get one. Up he goes, soaring through the air like he's trying out for Nassau's cowboy division. Now here's where it gets interesting. Instead of introducing his backside to the dirt like most folks would, Jake decides to show off his gymnast skills. I swear, it was like watching a cat fall, all twists and turns. Next thing we know, Jake's sitting pretty on top of the arena fence, cool as a cucumber in January. He's perched up there like some kind of rodeo bird, probably wondering how the heck he ended up with the best seat in the house. Uh oh, he's on up. Oh man. The hand out Owen. They're trying to get it to it. Jimmy Anderson right there. The crowd? They went wilder than a bucking bronco. Half of them were checking their beers thinking they must have gotten the strong stuff by mistake. The other half? They were giving Jake perfect tens for his dismount. I tell you, it was a sight to behold. Jake turned bull riding into some kind of extreme parkour event. He went from riding a bull to riding that fence like it was the most natural thing in the world. Heck, for a moment there, I thought he might just tip his hat and mosey on down the fence line. Now, you might be wondering how this landed Jake at number 20 on our countdown. Well, let me tell you, when you manage to make bull riding look like a cross between an extreme sport and a Cirque du Soleil show, you've earned yourself a spot in the Hall of Fame of Rodeo Shenanigans. I mean, think about it. Most folks are happy just staying on the bull for eight seconds. But Jake, he decided to rewrite the rule book. Who needs eight seconds when you can have an aerial tour of the arena followed by a fence top view? Number 19, Cody Custer's locomotive lesson. It's locomotive breath for a spin. Or is it the other way around? Here we go, don't get your feet flopping, look out. Oh. Now, if Jake's fence-sitting adventure wasn't enough to get your heart racing, let's choo-choo on over to number 19, where we've got Cody Custer taking locomotive for a spin. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear locomotive, I think of something big, powerful, and not exactly known for its smooth ride. Cody? He must have thought it sounded like a great idea for a rodeo date. Cody's there in the chute, probably thinking he's about to have himself a nice little bull ride. The gate swings open and BAM! Turns out old locomotive lives up to his name. Around. Here we go, don't get your feet flopping, look out! Oh, oh man! Oh, 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 oh. That bull starts bucking and spinning faster than a Texas tornado on a caffeine binge. Poor Cody's holding on for dear life but Locomotive's got other plans. This ain't no gentle merry-go-round ride, folks. It's more like being strapped to the blade of a giant blender. Left, right, up, down. I swear that bull was trying to hit every point on the compass at once. My dad was a bull rider and uh, I rode bulls. And now to see my son 
Now, most folks would have called it quits after the first spin cycle, but not our Cody. Oh no, he's sticking to that bull like a burr on a sheepdog. Problem is, the more he hangs on, the more Locomotive seems determined to turn him into cowboy soup. By the time Cody finally parts ways with his four-legged washing machine, he's so dizzy, I reckon he could have told you what he had for breakfast last Thanksgiving. His hat's gone, his boots are barely hanging on, and he's stumbling around like a newborn calf trying to find its legs. I want to prove to myself that I can be the best. But here's the kicker. Cody gets up, dusts himself off, and gives the crowd a wobbly thumbs up. I'll tell you, that man's got more grit than a Texas dirt road after a drought. Now, some might say Cody's ride was a disaster. Me? I say it was a master class in rodeo aerobics. Who needs a fancy gym when you've got 2,000 pounds of ornery beef tossing you around like a rag doll? That's a full body workout right there. And let's be honest, folks. Watching Cody on Locomotive was more entertaining than any roller coaster I've ever seen. It had twists, turns, ups, downs, and a whole lot of holy cow moments. If they ever make bull riding an Olympic sport, I nominate Cody for the most spins while staying somewhat vertical category. Number 18, Owen Dunn's Wild Child Walk. Cloud takes Owen Dunn for a walk. If Cody's locomotive was a runaway train, Owen Dunn's ride on Wild Child was like trying to tame a tornado while riding a unicycle. At number 18, we've got Owen taking a stroll that'd make any extreme dog walker jealous. It's like he saw Cody's wild ride and thought, hold my beer and watch this. Owen was bouncing around like a cowboy-shaped pinball while Wild Child seemed to be having the time of his life. Who needs a Fitbit when you can get a full-body workout like this? I bet Owen's pedometer was working overtime, probably thinking, what in tarnation is going on up there? Number 17, Chad Castillo's El Nino Nightmare. In wreck number 27. And he's got a nice bull here, El Nino, that, that he should ride into his hand. After Owen's wild walk, Chad Castillo decided to take on Mother Nature herself. Coming in at number 17, we've got Chad weathering the storm on El Nino. Now, them fancy weather folks might tell you El Nino is some kind of ocean current, but Chad will tell you it's a bull with a Texas-sized chip on its shoulder. It was like watching a rodeo version of Twister, with Chad as the unfortunate cow that gets sucked up into the funnel cloud. I reckon Chad was wishing he'd paid more attention in his high school meteorology class. Remind me never to complain about a little drizzle again. Number 16, BJ Cramps Bull Headbutt Bonanza. A Cramps finds out what it's like to headbutt a bull. After Chad's weather woes, BJ Cramps decided to make his own thunder. BJ takes the 16th spot with a move that would make any soccer player prouder than a peacock at a beauty pageant. Instead of riding the bull, BJ decided to headbutt it instead. Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Spoiler alert, it didn't. BJ ended up taking an involuntary nap in the arena, while the bull probably walked away wondering what in tarnation just happened. Remember kids, when it comes to head button contests, always let the bull win. Your noggin will thank you later, and so will your mama who didn't raise no fool. Or did she? Number 15, Jim Sharp's Lights Out Experience. Need we say more? Come on, come on Jimmy, stay in, stay in, stay in, stay in Jimmy, come on, oh, wow. Speaking of involuntary naps, at number 15, we've got Jim Sharp on a bull aptly named Lights Out. Now, Jim's a tough cookie, make no mistake. He's probably eaten nails for breakfast and used barbed wire as dental floss. But even the toughest cowboys meet their match sometimes, and boy oh boy, did Jim meet his in a bull named Lights Out. 
The crowd's cheering, the dust is swirling, and Jim's perched atop this snorting, stomping mountain of beef like he's the king of the world. He's probably thinking, I got this in the bag, what's this bull gonna do, turn off the arena lights? Well, turns out Lights Out had a different kind of blackout in mind. One second, Jim's riding high, looking cooler than a polar bear's toenails. The next, wham! Faster than you can say sweet dreams, Lights Out lives up to his name and sends Jim on an all expenses paid trip to Dreamland. I tell you, it was like watching a prize fighter get clocked by the world's biggest, angriest boxing glove. Jim went from rodeo star to ragdoll faster than a hiccup. That bull didn't just turn out Jim's lights, it unplugged the whole dang power station. The crowd? They went quieter than a church mouse wearing socks. For a hot second there, you could have heard a flea sneeze. Then, everyone collectively let out an ooh, so loud it probably registered on the Richter scale. Poor Jim hit the dirt harder than a sack of potatoes thrown from a speeding truck. He was spread out there like a cowboy-shaped pancake, probably wondering if anyone got the license plate of that bull that hit him. Number 14, Aaron Seamus's Promised Land Problems. Wreck number 24. And let's get it on Promised Land. Hey, Ron, come and laugh. Get your shoulder to him or oh, get out. After Jim's lights out experience, Aaron Seamus thought he'd found the bull riding equivalent of the promised land. Spoiler alert, he hadn't. Aaron takes the 14th spot with his ride on promised land. Now, I don't know what promises this bull made, but I'm pretty sure gentle ride wasn't one of them. Aaron got a one-way ticket to Painville. Population, him. He hit the ground harder than a sack of potatoes dropped from the Empire State Building, leaving everyone wondering if he discovered a new way to dig for oil. Thankfully, Aaron walked away, probably muttering something about false advertising and asking for a refund on his ticket to the promised land. Looks like this cowboy's milk and honey turned out to be mud and misery. Number 13, Dustin Hall's unhappy ending. Dustin Hall doesn't believe in happy ending. And an 82.5 in round one, look out! Lucky number 13 goes to Dustin Hall, who found out the hard way that there's no such thing as a happy ending in bull riding. So there's our man, Dustin, probably thinking he's hit the jackpot. He's drawn a bull named Happy Ending. Now, I don't know about you, but that name sounds about as promising as a chocolate-covered steak. But Dustin? He's optimistic. He's probably picturing himself riding off into the sunset, maybe with a tiara on his cowboy hat. The chute flies open, and out comes Happy Ending, who clearly didn't get the memo about his name. This bull's about as happy as a cat in a bathtub, and he's fixing to share his displeasure with everyone in a 10-mile radius. For a hot second there, Dustin's looking good. He's hanging on tighter than a tick on a hound dog, probably thinking, this ain't so bad, maybe this really is my fairy tale moment. But happy ending? He's got a plot twist up his, well, bulls don't have sleeves, but you get the idea. Quicker than you can say once upon a time, happy ending decides to show Dustin why they don't let bulls write children's stories. Happy Ending catches Dustin with a move that'd make a ninja jealous. One second, Dustin's riding high, thinking he's Prince Charming on a very angry horse. The ride right here, he's doing, kind of whips him down there, then all his time is off, you can see the horn hit him right there, that's where it knocked him out. The next, he's doing his best impression of a cowboy-shaped shooting star. Now, I've seen some fancy dismounts in my day, but this? This was like watching Cinderella's carriage turn back into a pumpkin mid-ride, with Dustin playing the part of a very surprised pumpkin seed. Dustin hits the dirt harder than a sack of potatoes thrown from the top of a grain silo. The arena goes quieter than a library full of mimes. For a split second, you could have heard a flea sneeze. Then, as one, the crowd lets out an ooh so loud it probably woke up Sleeping Beauty three counties over. There's Dustin, spread eagled in the arena dirt, probably wondering if he accidentally wandered into the wrong fairy tale. 
The rodeo clowns are rushing over, looking like the world's most confused rescue team. I half expected them to try to wake him with a kiss, but thankfully they stick to more traditional medical practices. But our boy Dustin? He's tougher than a $2 steak at a five-star restaurant. After what feels like an eternity, but was probably just a few seconds, he starts to stir. It's like watching Sleeping Beauty wake up if Sleeping Beauty had just gone 10 rounds with a very angry prince. Dustin wobbles to his feet, swaying like he's just stepped off the world's wildest merry-go-round. His eyes are spinning like pinwheels at a tornado convention, and I'm pretty sure he's seeing more stars than you'd find in all of Hollywood. But here's the kicker. Dustin raises his hand to the crowd, giving them a shaky thumbs up. The place erupts in cheers louder than a dragon with hiccups. That's our Dustin, folks. He might be seeing double, but he's still standing. Number 12. Mark Kane's Chin Check Catastrophe. Mark Kane on wreck number 22. Come on, Mark, out of boy. We could have a leader for Kane. If Dustin's ride was an unhappy ending, Mark Kane's was a jaw dropping beginning. Mark slides into the 12th spot with a ride that ended with an impromptu dental exam. The bull decided Mark's chin needed a thorough inspection, and boy howdy did it deliver! Mark's teeth probably thought they were on some kind of extreme roller coaster at Six Flags over Texas. Note to self, bull riding is not an acceptable substitute for a trip to the dentist no matter how much you hate flossing. I reckon Mark's gonna be eaten through a straw for a while after that little chin music concert. We could yes, have a leader yes. more chin. Come on, Mark, out of on. Oh, oh, man, he's not the go, oh, man. On the bright side, he might have a future in ventriloquism now. Number 11, TD's knockout courtesy of Jesse James. Jesse James in St. Louis. Mr. Rag, come around. Good turn right there. Come on, TD. Come on, turn on. After Mark's dental drama, TD decided to take on a real outlaw. At number 11, we've got TD getting KO'd by Jesse James in St. Louis. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear Jesse James, I think of train robberies and shootouts, not rodeos. But TD? He must have thought, hey, how bad can it be? Spoiler alert, it was bad. Real bad. The chute flies open and Jesse James comes out bucking like he's got a hornet's nest under his saddle. TD's hanging on tighter than a tick on a hound dog probably wondering if he'd accidentally hopped on a tornado instead of a bull. For a hot second there, it looked like TD might just pull it off. He's bobbing and weaving like a pro boxer, matching Jesse James move for move. Turn it on. Well, whip him down, bang! Oh, oh man, God. knock him out, boys. Get the gate open. The crowd's going wild, thinking they're witnessing rodeo history in the making. But Jesse James? He ain't no ordinary bull. He's got more tricks up his, well, I guess bulls don't have sleeves, but you get the idea. Quicker than you can say, yeehaw, Jesse decides to show TD why he's named after an outlaw. Wham! Jesse catches TD with a move that'd make Muhammad Ali jealous. One second, TD's riding high. The next, he's sailing through the air like a cowboy-shaped frisbee. Time seems to slow down as TD does his best impression of a ragdoll in a tornado. Now, I've seen some hard landings in my day, but this? This was like watching a man try to headbutt the earth into submission. TD hits the dirt so hard, I swear I felt the ground shake all the way up in the nosebleed seats. The arena goes quieter than a mouse tiptoeing in slippers. For a moment there, you could have heard a flea sneeze. Then, as one, the crowd lets out an ooh so loud, it probably woke up half of Missouri. TD's lying there, spread-eagled in the dirt, looking like he's trying to make a dust angel. The rodeo clowns are rushing over, probably wondering if they need to call an ambulance or a coroner. But our boy TD? He's tougher than a $2 steak. 
After what feels like an eternity, but was probably just a few seconds, he starts to stir. It's like watching a cartoon character peel himself off the ground after being flattened by an anvil. TD staggers to his feet, swaying like a drunk sailor in a hurricane. His eyes are spinning like pinwheels at a county fair, and I'm pretty sure he's seeing more stars than you'd find in the Milky Way. But here's the kicker. TD raises his hand to the crowd, giving them a wobbly thumbs up. The place erupts in cheers louder than a pig calling contest at a state fair. That's our TD, folks. He might be seeing double, but he's still standing. Number 10, BJ Cramps' Twister Tangle. Really, really big luck. He was voted the top bull at Fort Worth, the top Eagles Championship Challenge. After TD's Old West knockout, BJ Cramps decided to bring some modern flair to the arena. BJ makes his debut on our list at number 10 with a performance that'd make any yoga instructor green with envy. This time, BJ decided to audition for Cirque du Soleil while still on the bowl. He twisted, he turned, he did everything but actually ride the bowl. It was like watching a human pretzel being made in real time. Who needs the gym when you can get a full body stretch courtesy of an angry bull? I reckon BJ's gonna be walking funny for a week after that rodeo contortionist act. On the bright side, he might have a future in interpretive dance if this whole bull riding thing doesn't pan out. Number 9. Panhandle Slim's Bulldozer Impression Come on, flip him down! If BJ was all about flexibility, Panhandle Slim was all about raw power. Coming in at number 9, we've got Panhandle Slim living up to his name by trying to flatten everything in sight. The chute flies open, and out comes Panhandle Slim, snorting and stomping like he's got a B in his britches and a point to prove. The poor cowboy on his back? He might as well have been riding a runaway freight train with horns. Faster than you can say, look out below, our cowboy is sailing through the air like a leather clad frisbee. But Panhandle Slim? He's just getting started. This bull turns his attention to everything else in sight. The arena fence? More like a suggestion to him. He plows through it like it's made of toothpicks and marshmallows. The bullfighter's trying to distract him? They're doing more dodging than a politician at a press conference. I swear, I saw one bullfighter do a backflip that would have made an Olympic gymnast jealous. Another one? He's climbing the fence faster than a squirrel up a tree, probably questioning his career choices. But Panhandle Slim ain't done yet. He's got his sights set on the concession stand. I've never seen nachos fly so far or so fast. It was raining cheese and jalapenos, folks. The folks in the front row got a free snack and a show. The arena's looking like a tornado hit it, then backed up and hit it again for good measure. Dust is flying, people are scattering, and Panhandle Slim is in the middle of it all, looking mighty pleased with himself. By the time the dust settles, the place looks like a war zone. Back and that had to hurt. Fences are down, dirt's everywhere, and I'm pretty sure I saw a cowboy hat orbiting the arena like a satellite. The cleanup crew? They take one look at this mess and you can almost hear their thoughts. I don't get paid enough for this bowl. I reckon they're gonna need more than a broom and a dustpan for this job. Maybe a wrecking ball and a fresh start? But here's the kicker. Panhandle Slim, after all this chaos, just trots back to the pens cool as a cucumber, like he didn't just turn the place upside down. If bulls could whistle nonchalantly, I reckon that's exactly what he'd be doing. Number 8. Barry Gulo versus the Boogeyman. This boy keep taking his mouth in that. Scary. Go, let's see if works nice this time. After Panhandle Slim's demolition derby, Barry Gulo decided to turn the rodeo into a horror flick. Barry takes the 8th spot with his encounter with Boogeyman. Now, most of us outgrow our fear of the Boogeyman. But Barry? 
he found a whole new reason to be scared stiff. This boogeyman didn't hide under the bed. It bucked, kicked, and sent Barry flying through the air like a cowboy-shaped missile. Barry probably spent the next few nights sleeping with the lights on, jumping at every moo he heard. I bet he was checking under his bed for angry bulls for weeks after that little rodeo nightmare. Here we go, let's see if it works nice this time. He's gonna go down the well. See, I put it on like about right. it. He's not Who needs Stephen King when you've got the PBR? Number seven, Chris Shivers' Fort Worth fiasco. Shivers is well respected on the PBR. The bull is the son of Wolfman. After Barry's brush with the boogeyman, Chris Shivers thought he'd take on a real-life giant. At number seven, we've got Chris having a rough day at the office in Fort Worth. The bull is the son of Wolfman. Looking good. Whoa, two hands down. Chris, being a world champion, thought he had this bull riding thing figured out. The bull, however, had other plans. It was like watching a rodeo version of David vs. Goliath, except this time, Goliath won by a country mile. Chris ended up taking an all-expenses-paid trip to destination ouch. I bet he was wishing for a nice, calm desk job right about then. Maybe something in accounting or data entry. Anything that doesn't involve angry livestock and a dirt nap. Looks like this David forgot his slingshot. Number 6. Roby Condra's Jekyll and Hyde Horror. I'm sure Roby Condra would prefer Mr. Get in good shape, into the wall, in trouble. Hey. If Chris's ride was a battle of biblical proportions, Roby Condra was straight out of a classic novel. Roby slides into the sixth spot with a ride that was more horror movie than rodeo. Yeah. Get in good shape, into the wall, in trouble. Hey, oh, knocked him out. My good. The bull, aptly named Mr. Hyde, decided to show Roby exactly why he wasn't named Dr. Jekyll. It was like watching a rodeo version of a transformation scene, with Roby playing the unfortunate victim. One minute he was on top of the world, the next he was wondering if he'd accidentally stepped into a Stephen King novel. I reckon Roby's gonna think twice before getting on a bull with a split personality again. Maybe next time he'll stick to riding bulls named after more pleasant literary characters. How about a nice calm ride on Winnie the Pooh? Number 5. Jim Sharp's Encore Performance Jim Sharp, bullfighters in trying to get him, did a jump in his Jim Sharp makes his second appearance on our list at number 5, proving that sometimes lightning does strike twice and it hurts just as much the second time. After Robeson's Jekyll and Hyde experience, Jim decided to star in his own rodeo version of Groundhog Day. This time, Jim decided that one wreck wasn't enough. He needed an encore. Opportunity, he's gonna need some luck, but he's gonna have to ride this ball if he wants to win it again, there's no way. He's in trouble, he's hung up. It was like watching a rerun, but with more ouch and less yeehaw. Jim probably walked away wondering if maybe, just maybe, he should have picked a nice safe hobby, like knitting or extreme ironing. Anything but bull riding, really. I hear underwater basket weaving is nice this time of year, Jim. At least Bill Murray got to improve his day in Groundhog Day. Jim just got to relive the pain. Number four, Ronnie Kitchen's Spin Doctor Disaster. On Spin Doctor, he stomped on. No, no! Now he's hung up! Oh, oh! After Jim's encore performance, Ronnie Kitchens decided to put a new spin on things. Literally. At number four, we've got Ronnie on Spin Doctor. Now, when most people think of a Spin Doctor, they imagine a smooth-talking PR guy. Ronnie, however, got a very different kind of Spin Doctor. This one specialized in turning cowboys into human spinning tops. Ronnie ended up with a leg that looked like it had been through a blender set on puree cowboy. Note to self, when a bull is named after a medical professional, it's probably not gonna end well. Maybe next time, Ronnie should try riding a bull named Gentle Massage or Relaxing Nap. I hear Yoga Instructor is still available. 
Number three, Payson Thigerson's Blackout. Non Dillinger in Anaheim, California, 2000. After Ronnie's spin cycle, Payson Thigerson decided to up the ante. He takes the third spot with a ride that ended faster than you can say, hit me. So there's Payson, perched atop this monster of a bull named Dillinger. Now, I don't know if Payson's a gambling man, but boy howdy, did he just bet the farm on this ride. The chute flies open, and Dillinger comes out bucking like he's got a bee in his britches. Payson's hanging on tighter than a pair of skinny jeans after Thanksgiving dinner. For a hot second there, it looks like our boy might just hit the jackpot. But Dillinger? He ain't no ordinary bull. He's got more tricks up his... Well, I guess bulls don't have sleeves, but you get the picture. Quicker than you can say double down, Dillinger decides to show Payson why they don't let bulls into casinos. Dillinger pulls an ace from his sleeve, metaphorically speaking, of course. One moment, Payson's riding high, feeling like the king of the rodeo. The next, he's doing his best impression of a cowboy-shaped shooting star. It was like watching a high-stakes poker game, except instead of losing money, Payson lost consciousness. Talk about a bad bet. I reckon Payson's gonna stick to go fish from now on. Remember, folks, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but what happens in the rodeo arena gets replayed on the Jumbotron. Number two, Chris Shivers versus Shorty. Oh, he's going down in the well. He's gotta get out of there. Oh, man, he knocked him out. Oh, no, this is what he... If Christopher's ride was a gamble, Chris Shivers was an all-in bet with a busted hand. At number two, we've got Chris giving new meaning to the phrase, win at all costs. Chris, with an already injured arm, decided to tempt fate and ride anyway. The result? A ride that would make even the toughest cowboy wince harder than if they'd bitten into a lemon wrapped in a lime and dipped in hot sauce. It was like watching a rodeo version of a Rocky movie, complete with the underdog victory. Chris probably spent the next few weeks trying to figure out how to cash his check with a busted arm. Maybe he can hire someone to feed him grapes and fan him with palm leaves while he recovers. Talk about earning your paycheck the hard way. Number one, Tough Hedeman. It's the first three jump because this ball... And now, for the grand finale, the cream of the crop, the wreck to end all wrecks, Tough Hedeman versus Bodacious, part two, Electric Boogaloo. After Danny's painful victory, Tough decided to take on the bull riding equivalent of Mount Everest. Tough had already had one run in with Bodacious that ended about as well as a snowball's chance in Texas, but he came back for more. That's either bravery or madness, folks. You decide. This time, Bodacious decided to skip the foreplay and go straight for Tuff's face. It was like watching a rodeo-themed remake of Rocky, except Tuff's opponent weighed about 1,800 pounds more and had horns sharper than a Ginsu knife. The result? A facial reconstruction that Tuff definitely didn't ask for and a place in bull riding history that he probably wishes he didn't have. I reckon Tuff's gonna think twice before tangoing with Bodacious again. This wasn't just a ride, folks. It was a collision of titans, a meeting of immovable object and unstoppable force. Tuff might have been tough, but Bodacious was Bodacious. And there you have it, folks. The 20 worst wrecks in bull riding history. These cowboys prove that they've got more guts than your average Joe, and probably more bruises, too. They've been spun, tossed, trampled, and tangled, all in the name of eight seconds of glory. It just goes to show that in the world of bull riding, what goes up must come down. And sometimes, it comes down hard. But let's give a big round of applause to these brave or crazy cowboys. They've given us some of the most hair-raising, jaw-dropping, edge-of-your-seat moments in sports. 
They've shown us what it means to get back on the bull, even when the bull has other ideas. So the next time you're having a bad day, just remember, at least you're not trying to stay on top of 2,000 pounds of angry beef for 8 seconds. Unless, of course, you are. In which case, well, good luck, and maybe consider taking up a nice safe hobby, like volcano surfing or shark petting. Until next time, keep your hat on, your grip tight, and maybe invest in some really good health insurance. Yeehaw!